Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeff with Fluent American checking in once more. Today, we are, as always, targeting your pronunciation to help you approve, improve, not approve, improve in American English pronunciation. Um, again, my name is Jeff, and we have lots of audio files already, um, which I am exploring. Now, we're also streaming to Lang 8, so you may see my eyes wandering as I take a look at our different streams and things like that. Um, so just a note, already lots of comments from <laughs> Ali. Uh, Ali has been watching, looks like Squid Game. <laughs> I'm very slow on it. We're making our way very slowly. I think I'm on episode two. Um, so no spoilers, no spoilers in today's stream. Unless you really want to, I don't. I don't care a whole lot. But um, yeah. So if you're watching on Lang Eight, what we are going to do is we are about to listen to your audio files to discuss um, pronunciation. So I'm listening to your pronunciation, and then I'll be giving some feedback to think. Now, if you want to submit your audio file, you can do that. Um, you can see that on YouTube and the. Basically, in the lesson description, you will see all of the steps. In fact, I will even put the document page where you can, it's a Google Doc form, and you can submit your own audio file for me to take a look at. And already we have a many, many, many for us to try to finish by the time we finish our stream. Um, we're going to be specifically taking a look at this sentence. So the sentence that we are trying to say today, to practice our pronunciation for, is this. And again, if you're following the stream on youtube.com slash American, you will see it. Um, hello to Weir. Um, thanks for joining us on the Lang 8 stream and everyone else on the Lang 8 stream as well. Um, the sentence that we are looking at today is going to be, if we get a drum roll, the men beg the man to bend and join the band. So we have lots of great vowel sounds that we're gonna be taking a look at today. Um, hello to Harap for joining us on the Lang 8 stream. Um, okay. Um, oh, Ali, sorry about <laughs> my night bot. I don't know why he's overreacting to things. <laughs> I was okay with it. Um, but yeah, so this is the sentence we're gonna talk about. Um, Bob has a question on Lang 8, so if I wanna submit my audio, I have to do it to YouTube. You do, because on YouTube, I'll have, you can actually see the link with the instructions on where to submit your audio file. Um, so my apologies, it'll just be easier. Of course, if you don't want to follow on YouTube, you just wanna follow on Lang 8, that's cool as well. You'll hear my feedback. Um, you won't be able to hear the original file, but you'll be able to hear my suggestions and things like that um, as we go through this. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this sentence. Okay, so again, this sentence is the men beg the man to bend and join the band. So why is this sentence tricky? Well, it's because it's going to be taking a look at two major vowel sounds that often get confused, the S sound and the A sound. And just to note, as always, you may hear my son in the background because it is not quite nap time yet and he's finished his lunch and he is wild <laughs> in the house. Um, just things about that. Um, Ellie asks, you don't understand what the bot said. The bot basically just didn't like that. Um, I don't know. I think he didn't like that you commented so many things so fast. I'm not sure. Um, but let's talk about some of these vowel sounds. So the, so the first major vowel sound that you're going to see is this eh sound. Eh, like in men. M-E-N. M-E-N. Men. And to make this eh sound... Uh, first things first, placement. In American English, placement. You're projecting from low in your throat. Okay, so making sure that, again, the sound is really coming from down here. It's like, eh, eh. Um, and it's also very relaxed. You want to make sure lots of air is coming through your throat as well. In addition to that, for this eh sound, notice that my mouth is not super wide. It's like, eh, eh. Okay, so it's relatively straight lips, mouth more closed. Um, other things here. You want your tongue to take up a lot of space. You're trying to block air in your mouth. So you're gonna do that by raising the back, the middle, and the front of your tongue. Lift everything up just a little bit. It's like, uh, uh. So again, like for instance, men, men, okay. If this is still a tricky sound for you, it keeps coming out as like, man, man, or some sounds like that. What I would recommend are closing your mouth more and raise the front of your tongue a little bit higher. Um, so again, raise your tongue, close your mouth, like, uh, uh, 
And again, try to get this really projected from your throat. This is in contrast to the ah sound, ah. So for the ah sound, what you're doing is you're opening your mouth wide. Notice ah, ah, much wider than for the uh, okay? Um, also, you're lowering the front of your tongue and you're lowering the back of your tongue, but the middle of your tongue is going to be slightly raised, okay? So in fact, see, if you guys see my videos, you know what I'm saying is when you say ah and you look at yourself in the mirror like ah, ah, you should not be able to see into your throat because your tongue's too high. The middle of your tongue is blocking your, your vision, so you can't see there. Um, so that's one way you can tell if you're doing the ah sound right. Hello to Huang. Thank you for checking us out. I appreciate that. Um, one other thing that we also mention a lot with this ah sound is that when the ah sound links with the letter N or any nasal, when we say nasals, just a reminder, your nasals are um, the letters N or M or NG, those are called your nasal sounds because nasal refers to your nose, so the air is coming out of your nose. Like if you do mm, mm, that N sound is like N, that is your, those are nasals, same thing with M. Okay. Oh, and what is Bob? Okay, that makes sense. Bob, I hope that you, get, you can add your audio. You can see again, um, I posted the link in the chat so you can know where to place your audio file. So if you go there, you'll have all the instructions. You can put it right under surge in column 13, it looks like. Um, um, thank you for joining us on the channel. Um, so other things here, um, for that ass sound, when it links with a nasal, it, the sound's going to change. You're not exactly going to get that ass sound. Your tongue instead is going to slide back a little bit and you're going to do a heavy breath out of your nose before the end. So instead of ah, it's more an, and so for instance, how about the name? Um, a woman's name is Anne. And so when you're saying that, notice it's like and 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 compare that to just like like um ah for instance, like in cat. It's like cat and cat and notice the difference in pronunciations there just a little bit for that vowel. Um Ishan, yeah, exactly. So it's gonna be like and like the name. You could spell a n n or a n n e. Um, those are the probably two most common ways of spelling that. Okay. So that and sound can be a little bit tricky. Um, so take your time with that. Practice that. We have some videos that talk about that sound. Uh, so just kind of something to be paying attention to. Uh, attention to. Hello to Dina. Dina, Dina. Um, thanks for joining us on the Lang 8 stream. Um, other sounds from our sentence. So we again, we had the S uh sound that we talked about. And there's lots of words that have this. So we see the S uh sound in men. We see it in begged. We see it in bend. So again, men, begged, bend. One other key thing, too, that you just want to be mindful of is that um, for the for vowels in general in English, English is paying so much attention to vowel sounds, so much attention to vowel, sound, vowel sounds, and a lot of other language groups are not. They're paying more attention to um, consonants and things like that. So what I really recommend is trying to hold your vowel sounds. Make sure your vowel sounds really clear. If you ever talk to people and they have a hard time understanding you, they ask you to repeat yourself. Um, they don't seem to understand. You're giving you like weird faces as you're talking. Um, that can be a sign that your, your vowel sounds aren't coming across clearly enough. Okay, so just to practice that. Um, so again, men begged bend. And let's contrast that with the ah sound. So again, with man in band, man. Band, man, band. Okay. Um, other major vowel sounds that we see here, uh, we see some schwa sounds, it's like uh sounds. So, for instance, the, the, the. Um, it's like the men, the men beg the man. T two often gets reduced to a schwa sound, t, because it's it's not stressed. It's like the man to bend, to bend. Do you hear that? You could say to bend. There's nothing wrong with that technically, but the more common way to pronounce that, since it's not stressed, would be to bend, the, the man to bend. Um, and again, the, at the end. Our last uh, vowel sound that we haven't covered is this oi sound. Oi, oi, a bit of a diphthong. You can see my lip kind of opens and curls down a little bit, okay? Um, so again, oi, oi. And so Dina asks, what's the matter? Referencing like, what are we, what's the discussion? So we're focusing on pronunciation. 
Um, so if you're following on the YouTube stream, so youtube.com slash fluent American, we are about to hear your audio files and I'm about to give you feedback on how to say these sentences. And um, if you'd like to send your audio file to get some um, suggestions or some um, corrections and things like that for pronunciation, again, you can do that by going to youtube.com slash fluent American, checking out our live stream because um, we are about to dive into your sentences. Um, so again, this whole sentence in terms of vowel sounds and things is going to sound like this. It's like the men beg the man to bend and join the band. So I would say for this sentence, let's talk a little bit about stresses. Stresses have a huge impact in terms of your rhythm. Um, you know, one thing I, I would say a lot is that I think my students in general tend to have too many stresses there are lots of stresses and um so i would say you know let's try to minimize it a little bit let's say we wanted to say this um let's say we want to say this sentence with two stresses um if you do three or four in your audio that's fine um it's just for our sake right now i'm going to say let's do two if i were going to stress some words here um i would probably stress uh, man it's like the men beg the man to bend and join the band and i would also stress band and those would be your last major content words in your thought groups. Okay. If you're not sure what content words are, if you're not sure what thought groups are, um, definitely check out our channel, um, search those topics because we have lots of content on that. Um, but the men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. So those would be the places where I would be placing stresses. Um, Let's talk really quick about linking. Any crazy linking happening here? The men beg the man. So you do have some linking between that D on begged and that TH on the. It's like beg the, beg the. You know, it's not begged the. That's really hard to say, right? Begged the, adding a breath there. Not, not the easiest thing to say. Um, so what we can do is instead kind of link those because THs and Ds, not the same sound, but they're very similar. It's like beg the, beg the beg the man um, to bend and okay so we have how about that bend and bend and so when you have a word that ends on consonant like we do in the word bend and then we have and which starts with a vowel and what we can do is we can attach that consonant onto the vowel so instead of saying bend and it's going to become bend and Ben Dan. So it's almost like saying Ben, like the name, followed by Dan. Um, so that's going to be common again, ending on a consonant, next word starting with a vowel, just to help with linking there. Okay, so I think those are the main things um, I'm seeing in terms of stress, linking, and pronunciation of those vowels before we get into your files. Um, we have a question here from N Yuki. Pronunciation I want to know is one, or is that L? <laughs> is that a one or an L in Yuki? For for one, that's actually interesting, you know, even if that's not intentional. So one is a word that actually I see a lot of students uh, mispronouncing, especially from like Asian language groups. Um, you want to make sure when you're saying one that firstly that one, the it's starting with a schwa sound. It's like wa, wa, uh, uh, raising that like mid back of your tongue, lowering the very back, lowering the front. It's like uh, wa, wa. Okay. And then the key thing here is also that N, making sure that, again, the front of your tongue is making contact with the top of your mouth and the back of your tongue stays down. Don't let the back of your tongue rise. It's the difference between saying one, that clear N sound, front of tongue up, one, versus one, one, where that back of your tongue rises and the front of your tongue stays down. So just some, some notes there on one. Okay. All right. All of that said, I think we talked about everything in the sentence. Um, People have also highlighted in the Google Doc some different um, pronunciation questions they have. So if we have time at the end of the stream, we'll definitely try to address them. Okay. Um, some people don't have any questions, as I can see, but that's cool. All right, so let's get started. So you're going to see me put on my headphones. That way I can hear the audio files. But I will be sharing my audio, so that way I can. Um, as you can hear what I'm hearing. And you can hear the feedback that I'm giving and things like that. Okay. Um, give me one second to do that. Also get some quick water. I always remember my water now. So cheers to all my friends out there. Let's take a listen to your files. 
And let me share my screen and my audio. Give me one moment. Again, I want to make sure I can see the chat box and face people have some questions for me. Okay, and I think I uploaded these in reverse order, just a note. So um, if you were first, I think Marcos was first as always. He's always so eager. I really appreciate that. Um, I think I have you going um, towards the ends, just a note. But so we're going to listen to people saying that same sentence that I've highlighted, and then we'll give some feedback. All right, so let's listen to the first one here. The men back to the men to bend and join the bend. Okay, I feel like I'm hearing the men bed the men to bend and join the bend. Like I'm hearing like eh 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 eh. Um, let me play again. The men back to the men to bend and join the bend. Okay, uh, before we even get to the vowel sounds, let's talk a little bit about stresses. So like the men bed the men to bend and join the bend. So like they, they put a heavier stress on uh, join and join the band, join the band, as opposed to join the band. You know, stress is a very subjective thing. So everything that I'm saying here, you know, you have to be, you have to come at it with the understanding that what I'm saying is just a suggestion, um, but it's not a rule. There's lots of ways you can handle pronunciation and stress. Um, in different situations, you'll stress different words. But I personally would recommend in this sentence to stress band. English has this concepts called content words. Okay. And I just kind of highlight them very quickly, but you can see more content again um, on the channel. But content words are things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, things like that. Okay. In general, um, what I would really recommend is put the stress on the last content word that you can. That's the most likely place where the stress is going to go. Okay. So when you put the, when you say join the band, join the band. Um, okay. When you say join the band, what you're doing is you're, um, you have a join is a, a verb. It's a content word. Band is a content word as well, but you're putting it on join, join the band. And the more likely place where you're going to get stressed, though, is probably going to be on band. Join the band. Can you hear the difference between join the band and join the band? Join the band. Join the band. Again, I think you're going to be more likely to put the stress on band there because that's just one thing about stress. Okay. Um, let's check on comments really quick. Hello, Tacita. Thank you for joining us as always. <laughs> it's all good. Come when you can. You know, come when you can. Um, and Huang, that's fine. You know, that's why I gave two options. You know, you don't always have to do the first option. It's good to have some choices. That's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the vowel sounds that I'm hearing. So we talked about stress. How about for vowels? The men beg the men. The men beg the man. So again, watch out for men versus man. Can you hear the difference between those? Men, man. Men, man. Again, that... Um, you want to watch out for man, especially. That's the one that people typically have the most trouble with, getting that an sound, an, man. Notice how much wider my mouth is on that, man versus men, men. Notice how closed my mouth can be for that, men versus man. Okay, so one man, two men. One man, two men. The men beg the man. Okay, um, so just watch out for man there. Also... The men begged the men. The other thing I'll say, there are some th things I really like. I like the me uh, begged. I hear that g -d -g -d, and that's a sound that typically a lot of students have is some trouble with. They do like begged uh, or things like that. But make sure again that's a voice D. It's like begged, begged, good, good. Okay, so that's, a, that's really helpful. I, I think that sounds pretty good. Um, the I would also say that begged though is a little bit overstressed. It's like the men begged the man it's very dramatic very emphatic right versus the men begged the man the men begged the man okay see if you can hear that uh stressing the men begged the men okay so yeah so just a little bit over stress on begged i would tone down that uh stress a little bit to bend and join the band to bend and join the band bend band bend Band. I'll just kind of practice saying those two words 
make sure they sound clearly different. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, bend, band, bend, band. So just a note on that. Um, so again, I will read the sentence and show you the whole thing again. So again, the men beg the man to bend and join the band versus what I'm hearing here. The men beg the men to bend and join the band. Thank you so much for sharing the audio. If you have questions about anything that I just said, you know, feel free to leave a comment or if you're um, or a chat, if you're live with us right now, um, let's take a look at our second one. Okay. See, we're getting some more files too, which is great. Here's our next one. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay. I'll play that one more time. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay, sounds like a very similar language group. Um, I think that the S sounds and the A sounds are a little bit more distinct um, for this person. Okay, so let's listen to that first half again. The men beg the man. Yeah, I can hear a little bit more of a difference between men and man. I would recommend continuing to practice those combinations. Uh, we actually have a video. If you search on the channel for like sit um sit set sat i think that you'll actually be able to um to see that we video goes over those s sounds and ass sounds just a note um but um other things here let me play that again the men beg the man yeah kind of man versus man here difference in man versus man so again that and sound a plus the the linking with that nasal the men beg the man to bend and join the band. And some of the things with stresses. There, there, there's a lot of stresses here. And again, that's in general, that's fine. But I would really recommend, um, what would I recommend? I, I, would, I would really recommend um, reducing the number of stresses, reducing the number of soccers, because that's just going to give you more room to run in your sentence, more room to flow um, without too many pauses and things like that. The men beg the man. To bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Yeah, and again, I'm hearing like join the band versus join the band. So I'm just, uh, I would say cut down on stresses um, and also watch stresses. In general, you want to put it on the last major content word, like we said earlier. Okay, um, so those would be my, my biggest suggestions for, for that one. Um, thank you so much for sending that audio file. As always, I appreciate it. We're going to take a look at our next one. We're flying today. By the way, you can get your own audio included as well, taking a look at our Google Doc. Okay, you can see I put it in the chat box so you can see um, the steps to include your audio. Um, yeah, basically, you can use the website vocaroo.com. You record yourself, post the link, put the link in the Google Doc. It looks like this. Okay, and I will take a look and see it. All right, let's take a look at our next one. The men beg the man. I think that's one we just listened to. Let's try this. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. All right, let's listen to that one more time. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay. Well, I, was saying, I think the consonant sounds are very strong here. I would, I would really try to get the, the vowel sounds to be a little bit... Um, Stronger than your consonants, a little bit longer. Let's play that again. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Especially towards like the second half of that, like to bend and join the band. I'm exaggerating, but that's kind of the the effect that you have when those like those D sounds are really strong at the end of words, right? Or in those THs and things like that. Um, so again, it's to bend and join the band versus to bend and join the band. Like uh, notice the big difference there is just vowels. I'm letting the, the vowels breathe more and last longer than the, the consonants there. Um, but let's let's take a look at the first half of this. The men beg the man to bend. Let's do that again. The men beg the man. How about men? Do you hear that? Men? Men? The men. The men. The men. What I'm hearing there is I'm hearing placement that's very high and tense. Like the men versus the men. Hear a difference there? The men versus the men. The men. Try and get that sound, that S sound a little bit lower in the throat, more relaxed, more air coming through. That's going to be key to getting that natural sound. Meh. Meh. So it's not meh. It's more meh. 
because that's that's the very first thing. And you want to be careful too, because when we talk about placement, we are not just talking about vowel sounds. We are also talking about consonant sounds as well. I was actually working with a student earlier today on this. Um, what we found is that his placement was in general getting lower for vowels. But then when it came to, to consonant sounds, a lot of his consonants were staying high and tense. And this includes, for instance, like the for the N sound. Like for instance, when you're saying, mm, mm, are you saying, mm, are you saying, mm, you want to make sure again that the sound is coming from low in the throat. It's not tense. It's not, mm, it's not men, it's men. So again, it's not, mm, it's more, mm, mm, lower in the throat, more relaxed. Okay. Um, and this is, really key especially with letters like n or like m you know there's lots of letters in english that actually start with vowel sounds right like when you say n or when you say m you know technically when you're saying those it's, it's starting with a vowel starting with an e but when these pair you know when these attach to vowels you want to make sure that you're not including that vowel you know it's not meh and it's men so it's going to go in from that e sound into the n and it's going to stay relaxed and low the entire time. Men, men. So when I'm doing that, my placement is staying at the same exact spot for the full word. It's not rising. It's not men. It's men staying same spot for the entire duration. The men beg the man to. Again, for man, I know that's a tricky combination. I would like that an sound, like again, like the name an. An to just be a little bit clearer, man, man. Beg the man to bend and join the band. The bend and join. So how can we make this just flow a little bit more um, with the vowel sounds? See if you can hear what I'm hearing. Join the band. Back that up a little bit more. To bend and join. The bend and join versus to bend and join. To bend and join. So first thing that I think can help with that would be linking. Again, like we talked about earlier, saying Ben, attach the D onto and. Ben, Dan, join. Ben, Dan, join. So you may be wondering, pay attention to how I say the D on and. Ben, Dan, join. So what you can do is you can actually have a held D sound for that D at the end of and. And this is going to happen when you have two consonants uh, between words. So and is ending on that D. Join is starting with that J. So what we can do, instead of doing Ben, Dan, the join, we do Ben, Dan, join. It's like and join, and join. Instead of saying and the join, it's more and join. Just helps things flow a little bit more. Helps it get a little bit less choppy. So instead of having that and the join, it's more and join. It's a little smoother. So already we have, instead of bend and, it's more bend and join, bend and join. And how about that last part? Join the band. Band versus band. Notice again, pay attention to the B linking with the vowel. Join the band. Band versus band. Give that vowel on band just a little bit more time. Okay, we'll hold it just a little bit longer. Bend and join the band, the band. So again, in that sentence, the men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay. And again, just notice, I think all those things that we talked about at the end will just help that sound a little bit more, a little smoother um, when you say that. Thanks as always for the audio. I always appreciate it. We're going to move on to our next one. I'll take a quick water break as well as we listen to this. The man bet the man to bend and join the band. I'll play again. The man bet the man to bend and join the band. Okay. Um, some similar vowel things that we've seen earlier. Hello, Alex. Thanks for joining us. If you want to hear the audio files that I'm listening to, you can go to youtube.com slash fluent American. Otherwise, you can just kind of listen to the feedback that I'm giving. Um, so one thing I'm hearing again, vowel sounds, S sound versus A sound, for instance. The men. I mean, men versus men. Men. Do you hear the difference between how I'm saying men and they're saying men? Okay. 
the men. So I'm hearing the men versus the men. Uh, so so two things. It's more eh. Back of your tongue needs to be higher. Um, placement needs to be lower. Um, hello to John. Thanks for checking us out again. Um, so again, the two things. Uh, lower placement. Okay. And more raise back your tongue. More eh. Men. M-E-N. Men. Men. Um, the other thing I would say for men. Let's listen to that part again. The men bet. Men. Men. Uh, again, I, I would really recommend for N sounds. Um, I think the back of your tongue could have been down just a little bit more. Remember, when you're saying when you're saying an N, especially at the end of a word, make sure that the back of your tongue is down and the front of your tongue is raised. Okay, so it's like men, men. It's not men, men. It's more men, men. And like we said earlier as well, for N sounds, um, just like vowel sounds, keep the placement low in the throat and relax. So again, it's like mm. It's not mm. It's more mm. Mm. Can you hear a difference between mm and mm? You want to do more of the second one because, again, it's going to be lower in the throat and more relaxed. Men, men. The man bet the man to. Begged. Let's listen to that again. The man bet. I hear him bed, bed. I'm not getting that g, g. So watch out for consonant clusters. Remember, in English, it is possible to have two, three, four, or more consonants that are all together. And every single one of them needs to be pronounced with no vowels. So, for instance, here, begged, gd, gd. You want to make sure you can make that GD sound. Gd, gd, begged, begged. And you want to make sure that when you're doing that, that the your vocal cords are vibrating. This is a voiced sound. Okay, so it's not gd, gd. If you're doing like a gd, that's a sound that's not quite right. If you're doing like a gd, gd, again, not quite right, it's more gd, gd. And you also want to make sure you're not adding a vowel. So it's not ged, ged. It's ged, begged, begged. And bet the man to. Okay. And let's listen to man really quick. And to bend it. Back it up more. Bet the man to. In general, I like the, the ass on man, man. I think the placement could be a little bit lower. It could be a little bit more relaxed. You could get more air. Um, man to. Man, man, man. Versus man. Your difference man versus man, man, man. Again, it could just be a little bit lower in the throat, a little bit more relaxed. I think that'll be good. Bend and join the band. And to bend and join the band. To bend and join the band. Okay, so here we have the stress. I do hear the stress on band, which is great. Again, it's your last major content word. So you're more likely to put the stress on band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay, so I do hear that. And to all my friends who are joining on Lang 8, welcome. Um, if you want to hear the audio files I'm listening to, you can check that check us out at uh, youtube.com slash fluent American. Um, otherwise, just want to hear the feedback and things, you can stay on the stream here. Um, but yeah, so for there, I'm hearing like bend and join the band. Bend and join the band. Bend and join the band. Um, so again, just to know some placement for band. But I do like the, the stress on band. Um, I wouldn't say that this necessarily has like, um, I don't think that you would necessarily read this or s not read, say this sentence quite like this. I don't think that the pattern is common for what you would hear in spoken English. The man bet the man to bend and join the band. Because it's like to bend and join the band versus to bend and join the band, to bend and join the band. So I'd probably be a little bit less exaggerated on band instead of the band. I'd probably just more the band. The band. I'd have a sharper falling intonation. Bend and join the band. Ask them to join the band. Okay, so so I do think that's just some little things there that I think can help with the um just getting it sound a little bit more natural. Um but let's listen to that one more time. The man bet the man to bend and join the band. Yeah. Uh, so, so so I think those are all my my major comments there. Um, if you have some questions on that audio file, you can be sure, of course, to let me know if you're watching live in the chat. Or if you have a question in the future, you can leave it in the comments and I will see it. All right, moving right along. Let's take a look at our next file. See what's going on here. I love seeing the lengths too. Like some people are doing this in like five seconds, six seconds. Some people are doing it in like two seconds, three seconds. Um, let's see what, see what we have here. The man beg the man to bend and join the band. Come just boost my volume because that was a little bit low. Let me listen to that one more time. The man beg the man to bend and join the band. I'm hearing a lot of S sounds. The men beg the men to bend and join the band. That's kind of that's kind of what what I'm hearing there. 
Um, but let's break down the the first part of the sentence. The men beg. The men. The men. The men. So I mean, the men. The men. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can use a the men. There's nothing wrong. Um, typically, the word the is going to be pronounced with a schwa sound. You're more likely to pronounce it with a, uh, a, uh, the, the, um, as opposed to the. You know, the a lot of times is used more to show emphasis. Like the whatever the noun is that comes after it, you want to really draw extra attention to. And that's fine. You can you can certainly do that, but um I think you are you're much more likely to, to pronounce the with a schwa. The men. The men. Because yeah, it's not it's not usually a word that's stressed. You know, and the the E sound is typically more of a stressed vowel sound. Um it, it takes up more time, it's a little harder to say. Um, it takes more effort versus just the the men. The men, the men. You know, it's just it's just faster when you say the men. Um, so what that that that's one little thing I would recommend there. The men beg the men. The men beg the men. Um, the men beg the men. Similar thing with beg that we mentioned earlier too for begged. Again, make sure you get that good good sound because that cluster for me is missing a little bit. I'm not getting that good sound as much. See if you can notice that. The men beg the men. Beg the men. The men beg the men. And again, man. Again, with that an sound, just like we mentioned earlier, that an sound's coming in a little bit weak. You want more of an an, an. Beg the man. Beg the man. An. Uh, how about the second part? Men to bend and join the bend. To bend. Bend and join the bend. And join the bend. Again, I'm hearing like, join the bend. Um, join the bend versus join the band. Join the band again with that an sound. An, an. Notice my mouth again. An, an. So it's not n. It's an. First thing that you'll notice, my mouth is wider. An. Notice how far back my tongue is going. An. Um, and of course, the placement's low in the throat and relaxed. Just some notes again on that an sound. Okay. Um, Play that part again. Bend and join the band. And join the band, because again, I'm hearing join the band versus join the band. So I'm not here. I'm not hearing band. I'm hearing bend. To bend and join the band. And join the band. Um, and again, I think join might be a little bit strong for your stress. I probably would just put the stress more on band instead of bend. So it's not and join the band more and join the band. To, to bend and join the band. Because I'm hearing join the band versus and join the band. Okay. Uh, so one last time, just for a sake of comparison, the men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to join and to, to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay, so a little bit on stresses and vowel sounds. Those are the, the major things I see there. Um, thank you, as always, for sending your audio files. Um, if you have questions on that, leave a, leave a comment or a message for me, okay? We have a comment here from Zobeda, who's in the house. Thanks for stopping by, as always, Z. Great to see you. Um, this is a tricky sentence. The S sounds and the A sounds, along with a couple other things, as always, make this a, a tricky sentence to say. Um, so if you're finding this difficult, that's okay. It's not just you. Demon. All right, let's move on to our next audio file. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay, I'm going to listen to that one more time. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Okay, I would say out of the audio files that we've heard so far, um, I, I think that the S sounds and the A sounds are coming in a little bit more clearly here. Um, I, I would say continuing to work a little bit on that and sound just to get a little bit lower, more air uh, would be good. But I, ca I can hear the differences a little bit more clearly here. Um Let's analyze it in a moment. Just want to say hey to some people. Hello to Rumesa. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Rumesa Saeed. And hello to Sita again. It's really difficult to make a difference saying men and men. This is the part. This is why this is a challenging sentence. That S sound and that A sound. That is exactly the reason why this is not an easy sentence to say. That's part of why we picked this because it's a tricky combination. All right, but let's go back to the beginning for this audio file and kind of see... Uh, what we're hearing more specifically. Hey, that's great. I said it right. Yay. <laughs> Thanks so much for telling me. That. The men beg. I would even say for the men. 
the men. All right, the men versus the men. Hear a difference there? Men, 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 men. What's the difference? Uh, placement, firstly, mine is lower. Um, uh, I would also say... The men. Men. It almost sounds like the vowel's becoming a diphthong. Um, the men. I'm like, men, men, the men. Kind of exaggerating, but see if you can hear that movement. I'm hearing like, men. The men. Versus men. Men. Okay, so try to keep the sound a little bit static. You know, it's not a diphthong, it's just one sound. Keep it for the full duration. The men. Um, something that may help with that is reducing the N sound. The N doesn't have to be super strong. You know, it doesn't need to be men. It could just be men. Men. Um, you can also treat like a held sound. You don't need to release the air on the N. Um, the men. The men. I would also recommend raising the back of your tongue. The back of your tongue sounds a little bit low. And what that's doing is it's letting more air through. So instead of an eh uh sound, you're going to this eh, uh, eh, uh, as opposed to eh, uh, eh. Uh. See if you can hear the differences there uh, and adjust. How about the rest of that? Men begged the man. Begged, begged the men. Begged. Men begged. Begged versus begged. Hear a difference there? So begged versus begged, begged. And again, this is placement. Once again, lower in the throat, more relaxed. Also raising the back of your tongue just a little higher. Begged, begged. The man. Man. You probably get, even get the sli tongue sliding back just a little bit more on that and. I know that's a tricky combination, but just continue to practice that and, and. It's not, how do I put this? There's not like a ton of words that necessarily have like an and sound, but the words that do are very high frequency, like man, plan, than, sand, you know, the, the relatively high frequency words that have this and sound. So just continue um, practicing it because it's definitely a good combination to review. Um, and it's an, it's one of the ways that can really help separate, you know, a native speaker from someone who's like an English language learner is how you're pronouncing that and sound. Um, hello to Drink Coffee, checking out on the Lang 8 stream. And again, if you're watching on the Lang 8 stream and you want your own audio uh, analyzed by me, um, you can send your audio by visiting youtube.com slash fluent American and following the steps um, there um, on our live stream. All right, but let's, uh, let's play that part again so you see if you can hear what I'm talking about. The men beg the man. The men beg the man. Here are the differences between mine and theirs. To bend and join the band. And join the band. Uh, I, I, you could have done a little bit heavier stress on band, um, but in general, I think it's there. To bend. Again, bend versus bend. To bend. To bend. Again, back of the tongue, just a little bit higher. Bend. And a little bit more air. To bend and join the band. Another thing, too, about stresses. So like, to bend and join the band. Like, the men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. A lot of emphasis on bend. Um, I, I just don't think that you're likely to get, because like it, it, when you put the stress on bend, it's, that's, that makes it become like something that you're emphasizing, like to bend, like the men beg the man to bend when it's like, but there's another action. And typically, you know, if you, if you have like this and like to bend and join, to bend and join, what you would expect if you're joining like parts of a sentence with and is you would expect that whatever comes second would get the he heavier stress. It's like, I would expect more bend and join versus bend and join. Can you hear a difference between to, be to bend and join? That's the kind of distress I would expect versus to bend and join, which is the one I would expect less. Because again, this goes back to the rule we mentioned earlier. English is stressing content words and it usually prefers the last content word. Okay, so if you have that section with and, it'd be odd to put the stress on the first one. You would expect it to come on the second one. It's just a note. I think the, the stress is coming at a weird spot. Um, and how about the, let's listen to that part again. and join the band. And join the band. And join the band. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the heavier stress is on band. You, you, you could have um, raised the volume a little bit more on that and have maybe a sharper fall, but I do think I'm hearing the stress there. Um, so one more time, I'm going to play the file. Um, again, the way I would read this as the men beg the man to bend and join the band. 
The men begged the man to bend and join the band. The men begged the man to bend and join the band. Yeah. So those, those are my major things. Um, kind of related to all those points. I, I think that, that I'm hearing like four thought groups. See if you can hear those. The men. Thought group. Begged the man. Thought group. To bend. Thought group. And join the band. Thought groups. I'm here four thought groups. I would say, hey, try saying that sentence. See if you can do it in two thought groups. Just see what that sounds like. See how that affects your rhythm. All right. Thank you, as always, for sending the audio files. I always appreciate it. Um, can't do this without you guys. Um, let's take a look at our next one. The man begged the man to bend and join the band. I like stresses here. Uh, I'm not sure if you could hear that, but um, I thought the stresses were super clear. Uh, and then the, the spots where I would probably do it. You could maybe, again, I'm kind of hearing four thought groups, so you could have reduced it. And I think that would help your flow a bit. Um, but I do think the stresses are, are good. Let's play that again. The man begged the man to band and join the band. I also like the and sounds, especially on band. I think that sounds really clear. Band, band. I, I, I was okay with that. Let me play again. Join the band. Join the band. Join the band. That sounded low to me. That sounded relaxed. I, I like that and sound. Um, let's go to the, the top. The men. 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 Do you hear that? Men versus men. Men. The men. A little overstressed. Uh, and placement's too high. I think the placement's too high for the S sound. I also think the placement's too high for the N sound. I'm going to like, mm, mm, as opposed to, mm, mm. Remember, when you're doing that N sound, just like all other sounds, keep the placement low and relaxed. Mm, mm. So it's not, mm, it's mm. And again, it's not, eh, it's, eh. Uh. It's not, eh, it's, eh. Uh. The man begged the man. Begged. 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 I think in general, that's okay. Maybe the back of your tongue could be just a touch higher and the placement could be a touch lower, but I think it's pretty close. Um, the man begged the man to bend and join the band. To bend. Again, same thing with bend. Bend. I would say men bend. Men bend. You know, one video I have, and I encourage you guys to check it out, is a video that talks about the letter N and how it uh, it has an impact on people's vowel sounds. And I think that's something that we're really seeing here is that the N is affecting the clarity um, for uh, a lot of your vowels here. So, like, for instance, men, I think that the, the letter N is making it a little bit too tense and maybe even affecting some of the pronunciation of the vowel. And I think we're seeing it again with bend. Like I think if the sound, if the word were just like be, be without the ending, I think that would make it easier to pronounce. But if because we have this n, it's kind of changing it. It's not. It no longer becomes be. It instead becomes to bend. I'm getting be versus be be. Another thing too, you want to watch out for plosives. So your plosives are letters like p and b, letters that like when you pronounce them, like you're pressing your lips together and then you kind of like pop them open, like b b. Or like puh, puh. So you want to watch out for plosives because those can also have an impact on your vowels. They can cause you to maybe open your mouth um, a little bit more forcefully than you would otherwise. Um, so they can also potentially make your vowel sounds uh, tenser. Um, so just watch out for bend. All right, but let's play that again. So again, the original sentence, the men beg the man to bend and join the band. The men beg the man to bend and join the band. Yeah, so my biggest suggestion would be S sounds um, and a little bit with N sounds. Let's pay attention to those. Okay. Um, but as always, thank you so much for sharing that audio. All right. I need to upload and see who has sent audio to me recently. But those are the, that was the first batch of audio files that I have seen so far. Um, up next, I'm seeing Serge, Bob, Alex, and Z. That's a bit, I imagine. Um, we'll take a listen to these. It is not too late to send your own audio file. Okay. Um, so again, you can do that by going to our Google document link. We'll post that. Again, you can see that earlier in the chat um, to get some 
ideas of how to submit your own audio file. We also have a couple of pronunciation questions that we're going to be taking a look at as well, which people have posted into the document too. Um, so if you have a pronunciation question, maybe you don't want to send an audio file. I get it. It's sending it out into the world. <laughs> it can be a nerve wracking experience. I completely understand. Uh, but maybe there's still a question that you would like to have answered. Um, so that's why I have included in the document a column where you can submit um, some pronunciation questions and we'll be discussing some of those um, once we finish with these audio files. Um, give me my, I'm gonna be loading these up because I wanna take a listen to them to make sure they are appropriate for what we're doing. Okay, so that was from Buffs. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're gonna check one more. Okay, there's that one. Cool, cool, cool. And this was Bob's. Okay, so Bob will do yours. Um, last Bob has given us a description. So again, we have two options today. Um, one option was to say the sentence. And our second option was to just kind of give a quick description of your job. And, and for that, we can... Um, I don't know. We'll listen to some pronunciation things. Such are some quick grammar things that I noticed too. I'll try to highlight some of those as well, but we'll be listening to those. Um, and again, if you're following on Lang 8, what you can do is you can check out, um, if you want to listen to our audio files, so you want to hear what I'm hearing, um, you can go to youtube.com slash fluent American and see our document, or you, you'll also be able to hear me on the stream and hear the, the files that I share. Um, so beta asked a great question. Why did you ask about where we are? Why am I trying to steal your privacy? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to steal your privacy. I'm just trying to get an idea of where, you know, if you're if you're watching us, I want to get an idea of um, just about where where am I where am I reaching? You know, who who am I talking to? Where are people at? Um, it just kind of gives me an idea of like future content, who I need to be kind of gearing towards, and things like that. If I can identify some common languages or common locations and things, um, you don't need to share it if you don't want to let me know. If you're like, that's my information. It's not for you, Jeff. <laughs> I completely understand. Um, just if you want to share. Um, okay. Great question. Ooh, vocal fries and things. I'm just looking at the questions I'm seeing. Um, let's actually kind of, let's take a quick break from looking at audio files. Let's just kind of give some quick answers to some of these pronunciation questions. Um, here's our first one. Put this into the chat box so you guys can see. But I am seeing. I struggle with saying regularly and burglar alarm fast. Please help. <laughs> These are some tricky combinations. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about regularly. This is a word that um actually had in my Telegram group. So if you're not familiar, by the way, if you like what we're doing right now, if you're like, oh, this is actually really helpful. Um, getting getting feedback on my pronunciation and things, you can get this sort of feedback every single day. In our Telegram group, um, if you visit YouTube, I mean, if you go you visit YouTube, if you visit YouTube too, but if you go to patreon.com slash fluent American, what you'll see is that I have a Telegram group where every day I post a challenge and I provide audio. So I give you like a sentence or I give you a group of words to say, and then I record myself saying it. So you can use that as your model. And then what you can do is you can submit your own audio file. And then I give you feedback. Usually the feedback comes within 24 hours. Um, sometimes on weekends, I'm a bit busy with my son and my wife, as you, you would probably expect. Um, so, But in general, you're getting feedback within 24 to 48 hours on what you just said. Um, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, um, definitely take a look at patreon.com slash Fluent American to find out how to join, again, our Telegram group. Because um, we do this every day. Um, on Z says, Sita says she's watching her favorite teachers. It's so touching. Thank you, Sita. I hope that if the if the week was tough, I hope that your weekend goes smoothly. We always want smooth weekends. I know here it's very dark and gloomy and rainy. So hopefully the weather is better where you are. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you guys are about to have a much nicer time of the year than we are. Um. Anyway, so back back to our question. I, I struggle with regular. I st struggle with saying regularly and burglar alarm. Okay, so how can we fix this? Let's let's take a look at the word regularly. Okay, so for regularly, um, for that, 
my biggest suggestion when you're saying regularly is to first just try to say regular regular that tends to be a little easier so still, still tricking lots of r sounds but it's a little bit easier um regular regular if that's tricky what you can do is break it down further you can do you can say guler guler and then you can say re regular regular so you, you know in general for pronunciation if you have a word that you find hard to say my suggestion is let's break it into smaller parts i usually start towards the end so for instance um Let's say, uh, let's just use regular for an example. So I would start from the back. I would just say, er, er. Okay, just get comfortable with that. Then I can add on to that. I could say, gu -ler, gu ler And then I could add on the next part. Regular. So again, ler, gu ler, regular. And you can mix it up too. You know, you could do like ler, gu ler, re, regu, regular, regular. Okay, and once you get comfortable just kind of breaking it up and saying it, then what you can do is you can start speeding it up, right? You could do like regular, 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 <laughs> just like let the R sounds take over. You know, so, so that's one strategy you can use if you find a word that's a little bit difficult um, to pronounce. This is That's one tactic you can do. Um, hello to Sophie. Um, thanks for joining us. If you want to hear the audio that we'll be listening to and things like that, Check us out at youtube.com slash fluent American. Otherwise, you can just chill with us on the stream and I'll try to give you um, try to you can at least hear my feedback that I'm giving. Um, so again, that's for regular and then regularly. So if you can say regular, then you can say regularly because all you're doing is you're just adding a Lee sound. It's like regular pause Lee, regularly, 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 regularly. And again, it's the same thing. Speed it up, say it faster. Um, and that's just a technique that you can use to try to say words that you find more difficult. Okay, start with more pauses and then repeat it with shorter pauses and shorter pauses. Uh, next one, burglar alarm. Well, I hope you don't have to say that word a whole lot. <laughs> Hopefully not need to say burglar alarm. Um, but um, burglar alarm, I would again, similar types of step. I, was, I, I would start with the last word, alarm, alarm. Burglar alarm. Other other things you want to keep in mind too. There's going to be some linking here, right? Burglar is ending with the R. Alarm is starting with the A, uh, the the schwa. Okay, so we want to probably attach that R to alarm. So again, you could do like arm, alarm, alarm. See if you can say that. Alarm, alarm. And now you can go to burglar, glur, glur, burglar, burglar. It's like burglar, uh, burglar, uh, and then alarm, burglar, uh, alarm, burglar, alarm, burglar, alarm, burglar, alarm. You know, kind of just doing different combinations like that. Um, you know, with some spaces, repetitions, say it slower, say it faster, um, play along with it, um, and, and, and see what that does for you. Um, that, that would be my biggest suggestion. Um, also, you want to watch out for burglar alarm because that's a this is a compound noun. Okay, compound nouns. If you're not familiar, are nouns that have um, basically two parts. They kind of function like a lot of words do in a lot of Asian languages, where there's, there's two separate parts that kind of join together to make a single thing. So, for instance, a burglar alarm is one thing. So when this happens, we want to stress burglar. So you don't want to say burglar alarm. You want to say burglar alarm. Burglar alarm. So again, it's not burglar alarm. It's burglar alarm. Okay. All right. And I hope that helps with that. Okay. Um, next up, we have this question. And you're actually, for some of these questions, I have also posted. Um, if you look at the lesson, I mean, the lesson, if you look at the, the stream description, like if you look at the video description, I've included some links that go into some of these things in more detail. Um, so, for instance, I have one posted for the j sound and the j sound. Okay, but the the big thing I would say is that the difference between j and j. This is the difference again. So they give us some words like managed that j sound versus massaged j. Here, difference between j j versus j. Um, hello to XR. Thanks for joining us on the stream and to everyone else who joined us online. Eh? Um, the first thing I would say that that j sound is a stop. So you want to try to block air. You're pressing kind of like the front of your tongue 
like kind of like right around there. You're trying to press that against the top of your mouth, right around where your, your gum and your tooth meet. So up high. And it makes like a j, j, j. Okay. Uh, so for instance, in that word, manage, j. Okay. You can also use the very tip of your tongue too. So anywhere that's kind of in the front of your tongue, the very tip or a little bit behind there. Um, the j sound is a little bit different. It's not quite a stop. It's more of a fricative, which means that there should be air that's always pushing through your mouth. Okay. So you can compare, for instance, like j, 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 j. One thing I'm also doing. So again, when I said j, it's a stop. You want to try to block the air with your tongue. Don't let air get past your tongue. Just j, j. Whereas for j, I'm using more of the middle of my tongue. So instead of using like right around there, I'm using a little bit farther back. So like, kind of like around there with my tongue. J, j. So my tongue's a little bit farther forward. Um, hello to Dahlia. We're taking a look at the difference between a j sound and a j sound really quick. Um, so again, in that word managed, I'm trying to block the air, managed versus massaged, massaged. So again, a little bit smoother. You should always have air moving through your mouth when you're asking that j sound, j. So again, managed j sound versus massaged, massaged. Okay. Um, I hope that helps. We have some more information about that. Again, if you look at the details on the, um, the YouTube stream. Okay, so that's a, the first part of that question. There was a second part, though. Also, the O sound, or the owl sound, like in house, and the owl sound, like in pal. So, like, pal versus, like, pounce. Okay, so, this is some examples. Okay. This is the next sound that we're going to take a look at. So, question about the owl sound and the owl sounds so again pal pal you know i think why is this confusing well it's because when you have this this l sound at the end of a word you're typically going to have a dark l and if you're not sure what a dark l is um you know normally when you make an l sound like l l you're raising that front of your tongue and making contact with the top of your mouth like l l but when you have a dark l sound it's the opposite right you're actually going to lower the front of your tongue. You're going to raise the back of your tongue. So instead of getting like a l, you're going to like an o, oh, o. Oh. Okay. To give you a quick example, how about a word like um like full? Like, are you hungry? No, I'm full. Full. What you're doing is you're raising the back of your tongue, lowering the front. O, oh, o. Oh. Okay. So that's that's the first thing. So like um, for instance, a word like pal, pal. Again, you're ending with that dark l sound. Ow, ow. Versus ow, ow. So notice that, hello to universe, thanks for checking this out. Um, so notice that um, for pal, I'm getting that al versus for pounds. Do you see the difference between al and ow? Al, ow. Look at my lips, see if you see any differences there. So again, al and ow. You'll notice that for the ow sound, like in house or found or pounce, that it starts wider, but then you're going to close your mouth, get slightly rounded lips, and more again, close, more closed. Ow, ow. Doesn't need to be tight. You know, you don't need to do the ow. Doesn't need to be quite that round. That's not going to get you a natural sound. But it's more ow, ow. Okay. So just some some quick notes. So again, when you say that ah sound plus an l, you can keep your mouth a little wider with the back of your tongue high. Ow, pow. Versus when you say that ow sound, ow, you can close your mouth more towards the end. Also, you're going to no notice, too, that for the ow sound, like, again, like in pounce, that your tongue, while it's going to start lower, especially like the front of your tongue, it's going to end up higher because, again, your, your tongue is attached to your lower jaw. Hopefully that's not news to you, so your tongue doesn't fly around everywhere. Um, your tongue is attached to your jaw, so as you close your mouth, your tongue only has one place to go when you close your mouth. Your tongue has to rise because it's going like, ow. Okay. So I would say those are the, the big things that you're going to notice with that ow sound is that your lips will be rounder at the end and that um, your tongue's going to go a little bit higher. These are very similar types of sounds. So again, like pow, pounce, pow, 
pounce. They're very similar, but that fact that you're closing your accent more, I think, is really um, I'm mean, close your accent more, closing closing your mouth more, it becomes more evident. Um, hello to Matthew who checked out the uh, Lang Eight stream if he's still there. Okay. Oh, we had one more vowel combination. Okay, let's take a quick look at that. Give me one second. It looks like this looks kind of like British IPA to me, but we can still use it uh, for the O sound. So again, like O versus O. In fact, I actually have a short YouTube short, but also a video that talks about the differences between the owl sound and the O sound. Okay, or like the not. Uh, excuse me, the O sound and the O sound. So this is a, a to give you an idea, this this is the difference between saying go and go. Again, go and go. Okay, so let's start with some go. Oh, oh. What you're going to notice with this is that um, back of your tongue is going to start a little high, front of your mouth is down, front of your tongue is down. It's like, uh, like, uh, uh. When you make this O sound, you're starting off with this uh, uh type sound uh and then you're closing your mouth more slightly rounding your lips and raising your tongue so it's like ooh ooh so together it's going to sound like oh oh or generally it's going to be faster than that and be more like oh oh so again go go this is a little bit different than the um when you have like this uh all sound like again a dark l um for the dark L sound, you want to keep the front of your tongue down the entire time. Okay. And your mouth can stay open. You can keep your mouth wider than you can for the O sound. So for instance, when you say go, go, notice that my mouth is a little bit wider than it is when I say go, 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 go. Okay. Notice that shoot also for that O sound that your lips are maybe a little bit round in the center, but in general, it could be a little bit straighter. It's like, um, go versus goal, goal. Okay. Um, I hope that helps again. Again, looking at like dark L type sounds, I think can be helpful for that. So again, go, goal, go, goal. I think what you'll see with the dark L too is that your lips will be a little bit tenser. Whereas for the O sound is a little bit more relaxed. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, let's take a look at our next one. Trying to get through as many questions as we can here. The question, how can we recognize the intonation when we speak about tag questions? It's a good question. How can we do that? I don't know. So let's maybe give ourselves an example um, sentence to kind of discuss this more. Um, use like a negative question. Again, this is another one I have a whole video for. Okay, and you, you can see it's in the lesson details, but I'll just give you a quick example right now, just give you a taste. Okay. Um, if you use a rising or a falling intonation, it completely changes the meaning of this sentence at the end. Um, so, for instance, you didn't go, did you? Versus, you didn't go, did you? Can you hear the difference between did you and did you? And the difference is intonation. And basically, if you say, did you? That kind of makes it like an actual question. Like, I don't know if you went. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I'm really not sure. It's like, you didn't go, did you? Maybe you did go. I don't know. It, it expresses uncertainty. Whereas if you say, you didn't go, did you? You didn't go, did you? Now, this changes. Now, I'm almost like not really asking a question. It's like, I really, I'm like 99% sure that you didn't go but I wanted you to go. You disappointed me. I wanted you to do something. You didn't do it. At least I think you didn't do it. So I'm using this falling intonation. Did you? You didn't go, did you? So what it does, again, intonation completely changes the meaning of those sentences. It's like, did you? Did you? Um, so what I would recommend, if that's still a little bit confusing, take a look again, less in details. You'll see the, the link that goes into more um, practice with that. Moving right along with our next question. Um, Bob, when we look at your audio, he asks, is my pronunciation more UK or American or British based or American based? We'll take a look at that. Alex asks the question about his file. Is my placement low enough? We'll find out. We'll take a look. Um, uh, how to get rid of vocal fries. 
Good question. If you saw one of our videos, um, it's not one I actually had prepared for, so I have to think about that. How to get rid of vocal fries? Um, if you're not familiar with vocal fries, I actually posted a video. What was it two weeks ago? I have a video that basically talks about pronunciation differences between men and women. And one of the biggest differences is that um, a, a very popular trend for uh, social reasons going on in the U.S. People can't you can't really explain things. Just kind of a behavioral thing that's happening is that many especially female speakers of English in the U.S., kind of starting in California, but spreading, are using what's known as a vocal fry. And I'm not going to be able to give the best <laughs> example of a vocal fry, but a vocal fry is like, it, it's like dragging out, like the things that you're saying, like like getting this like raspy kind of sound. Um like, did you want coffee? Did you want coffee? Like, kind of like dragging out that vowel sound a little bit. Um, a little bit lower, which you hear kind of like that crackly, poppy kind of sound. Um, and again, here's that here's that video that talks about kind of gender differences in pronunciation um, that you may encounter in the U.S. or American English. Um, uh, how do you stop doing that? Um I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there, you know, there's no biological need to do a vocal fry. It's it, it's entirely like a social thing. Uh, what I would recommend, uh, 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 um, that's a good question. I don't, <laughs> I'm not much prepared for for answering that question. Well, what I would recommend is like, so for instance, let's take a word like, um, like coffee, coffee versus coffee, um. Maybe making um, the vocal cord just slightly tenser. I know we always talk about placement and making things tenser, but in some ways it's kind of making things too relaxed and kind of dragged out. So you're, you're kind of breaking up the sound in a lot of ways. You're getting like this uh, versus an E. It's like uh, E. And you know this is actually something I see a lot with students. So you're almost like reducing the sound too much. Um, so trying not to reduce the sound, trying to maintain that E sound. So I would recommend, you know, you, you commonly see this with vowels. So, you know, so practice saying vowel sounds um, a little bit more strongly. So for instance, like A, E, I, O, doing like exercises like that, just kind of repeating that like A, E, I, O, and trying to catch yourself if you're doing like A, E, like it's more A, E. Um, tr you can also kind of feel those vibrations when you do it. Like uh, like if you just catch yourself, record yourself, see if you hear that kind of like clicking or popping um, sound, you know, and, and if you hear that, then that's, uh, that's a clue that you're, you're you may be doing um, a vocal fry. Um, so listening to it, um, trying to identify the specific words, you know, there may be specific vowel sounds that you find that you're, you, you're more likely to do it with. So I think trying to identify those sounds, um, will be helpful as well. Maybe come up with a list of words that you find yourself doing it on. Um, recording yourself is gonna be key for that. Um, and then once you've found the specific words or the specific situations where you're doing the vocal fry, then we can kind of start targeting it more. Cause maybe we'll find out, oh, I have a tendency to do this more with like a, like a long eye type sound, right? Um, those would be my recommendations for right now. Uh, maybe hopefully in my next stream or something like that, I can find some more resources for if, you, if people have a vocal fry, what are some ways they can approach it? Um, yeah, but Z says, wash it. Maybe people will get rid of it more than before. <laughs> Keep in mind, I have a clip in that video of people doing vocal fries, and that's certainly a more exaggerated clip than <laughs> what a lot of people are doing. Um you know, it may not be as, as noticeable as you, you think it is. Um, as we listen to your audio file, we'll see if we can hear it. Um, and again, the relaxation techniques. I'm wondering if the relaxation techniques, are, could they be too effective? Are we making it too relaxed? Um, again, I think, I think like, again, like an E sound can be really helpful because, again, that's the sound that needs to be, again, placement's low and relaxed, but you don't want it to become, eh, it's more an E, E, E. Um, I think other things I notice when I'm doing that. Uh, e, 
Uh, yeah, you know, it's. I think a lot of times it ends up reducing the vowel sound a little bit. Um, but I'll see if I can find some more information for you on that. And then okay, I feel like I always get this. <laughs> it's such a popular question. Everyone always has it. Um, so we, we have to address it, right? Next question I see, how can I fix my accent? <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that is quite the question, right? Um, so, so I think the first question I would even narrow down, can I fix my accent? Yes, I do think people can, can change their accents and things. Um, the question about how to do it. Well, I mean, I think it's like any skill. The more time that you put into it, the, 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 the better results you'll get. You know, I don't think there's any secrets to that necessarily, right? Um, so the question is because is then, all right, so if I can give more time to pronunciation, what do I need to be doing? And first things first, I, I, I can't recommend this enough. I, I would recommend doing some shadowing exercises every day. In fact, um, we have a um, we have a live stream that's going on 24 seven that just has shadowing exercises. So if you're not sure what shadowing is, um, definitely take a look. I will send you a link that you can check out for shadowing. Nonstop shadowing exercises. You know, I would say, hey, you know, if you can shadow for um, for five, ten minutes a day, you do that every day for a period of time, I think you will notice that you start noticing the rhythms and things like that more. Um, other things, um, also kind of knowing what sounds you, you're struggling with. You say fix your accent, but what parts of your accent? Um, you know, the majority of my students are struggling with vowel sounds, but which vowel sounds? You know, so doing things like a pronunciation test can be helpful. Um, so that way you know what specific sounds you're having the hardest time with. You know, you can actually do that. Um, if you go to fluentamerican.com, you know, we give pronunciation tests and you get your results back in like two days. And I tell you, hey, these are the things that you need to work on. Okay. Um, we have a free version that just does vowel sounds. Now we have a full version that costs what, like 13 bucks or something. It lets you know all the sounds that you need to target. So that's, you know, that's, that's another thing I would recommend is that, hey, you need to know what sounds you need to, to focus on um, to, when you're fixing your accent. Um, but um, it, I'll, I'll put it this way. You know, if I'm, if I have a student and they're like, okay, Jeff, I need to study two things to improve my accent. What do I need to study? Well, the, the very first thing I would suggest is placement because placement affects how you're pronouncing every single sound in American English pronunciation, how you're affecting every single sound. Everything needs to become low and relaxed. So that's my first suggestion, study placement. Um, I have plenty of resources for that as well, which I can send you momentarily. Um, so again, placement is going to immediately affect all of the sounds that you make in English, okay? The other thing that I would really recommend studying is a concept called stress. Okay, because again, English is stress timed and not all languages are stress timed. So by studying stress, you get an idea of the kinds of rhythms that you're more likely to encounter in English. So I would definitely recommend um, studying different stress patterns. So to su in summary, shadowing, uh, take a pronunciation test to see what sounds you're specifically struggling with um, and studying placement and stress. Okay. And that I just sent a playlist that you can see there that shows all our videos that talk about placement. Okay. Um, those would be the places that I would begin if I were trying to study uh, pronunciation. I, I hope that's helpful. Okay. And that was the same person long. <laughs> this is another way actually you can improve your pronunciation. <laughs> um, long story short, went to the US, <laughs> went to the US, got a girlfriend, <laughs> not going back. <laughs> um, you know, having a significant other that speaks the language that you want to study. I mean, that's, um, that's one of the best ways <laughs> to improve your pronunciation if that's possible for you. Um, I really try to work with them in your language, you know, especially if you, you have a partner who is willing to only speak with you in your target language, or maybe that's the only way you guys can communicate, you know, that works better for, for you. Um, relationships are really tricky because like, let's say you have two people and both people speak each other's languages. Um, the general thing that you see with relationships is however your relationship starts is usually how, um, that's the language you usually stick with. 
you know, so like if I meet someone who speaks my language, even though we're both studying another language, most likely whatever we do, we're going to just speak whatever language you use when we first met each other. That's, that's the general tendency with relationships. You can change it, but it takes a lot of work. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in a language, my recommendation for you is to try to meet as many people using that target language as you can, because whatever, however your relationship starts, that's most likely the way the relationships, the, the language is going to stay, you know, um, but that, that's another way you can <laughs> improve your pronunciation. Um, okay. I want to take a look. There was another um, pronunciation, pronunciation file one just here. <laughs> I think we've had this person before. Let's save that one for last. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go back to what this whole stream is about, which is giving you feedback on your pronunciation. And there's still time, um, a little bit of time left. If you want to submit your own pronunciation file for me to take a look at, you still can. Again, you need to go to youtube.com slash fluent American. If you're following on the stream, um, you can, if you're following on the stream on YouTube, um, you're going to see that there is a document where you can input your audio files and I will see them and I will give some feedback for them. Okay. I know we have at least one speaking file that we're going to hear, um, which is going to be great. Um, but let's do some quick pronunciation ones. I'm going to share my screen and my audio for you again. Give me one moment. Oh, and Zabeta says, God, Zabeta, wow. And if they break up, they'll hate that language. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> but oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh, and then Ali has to bring up Ben Simmons. Um, if you're not familiar, who who is Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons plays on the Philadelphia 76ers basketball team. Um, I grew up from Philadelphia. I'm a big Philadelphia Sports fan in the United States, um, Philadelphia, if you're not sh sure what that is, it's like two hours south of New York. Um, <laughs> I cannot resolve Ben. Ben will play when Ben wants to play. He's had some some drama going on. But we all have dramas. We all have our dramas. But that's harsh. <laughs> that's harsh. Really. Okay, let me be sure I'm sharing my audio with you guys so you can hear what I'm hearing. Okay, so we're going back to analyzing your pronunciation files. Um, here is our first one. And again, in case you've forgotten or in case you have just checked into the stream, the sentence that we are reviewing today, I'm looking for it. You're seeing my eyes wander because I'm trying to find it in the chat box. There it is. The men begged the man to bend and join the band. This is the sentence that we are analyzing your pronunciation for. So let's take a quick um, look at this next file. Here it is. The men begged the man to bend and join the band. Okay. This is for the vocal. I'm not hearing much of a vocal fry here. I'm here again. The man to bend and join the band. I think a little bit with stresses would probably be the first thing that I would mention. Um, let me hear it again. The men begged the man to... I mean, like the men begged the man. The men begged the man. That's a very strong men. Like the men. Like, no, it wasn't the, it wasn't like the boys or it wasn't the girls. It was the men, the men begged the man, um, which, you know, obviously can work, um, in a general situation, probably though, not the place where you would put the stress. The men begged the man to bend. I would also say man, you can make that again, that connection between ass on an N a little bit clearer, man, man, the men begged the man, the man to bend and join the band to bend and join the band um probably could have you could even raise the pitch a little bit on band because again band is most likely to receive some stress to beg and join the the men beg the man to bend and join the band um i, I would have raised the pitch maybe a little bit more on band just to make that stress sound a little bit more clear um let me play that part again the men beg the man to bend and join the band the men beg the man to bend what i do like about this is um i think the number of thought groups is great the men begged the man to. 
the men begged the man. The men begged the man. So again, we can argue about where to put the stress there, but I, I think it jumped that that thought group. The men begged the man. I think that's a very natural thought group there. I think that's a good unit. Um, to bend and join the band. To bend and join the band. Um, and again, so we get two thought groups as opposed to four because a lot of the files that we've been listening to have been breaking into four parts, right? The men begged the man to bend and join the band. Like that's kind of like a general thought group pattern we've seen but i think having two just lets you flow a little bit more um yeah so my biggest suggestions there would be just adjusting your stresses a little bit uh make stresses become a little bit clearer so for instance on band or a little bit less uh exaggerated like the the men the men beg the man um things let's read that one more time the men beg the man to bend and join the band the men beg the man to bend and join the band Yes, those would be my big suggestions there. Um, thank you so much for sharing that audio. I always appreciate it. Let's listen to our next one. The man begged the man to band and join the band. I'll play it one more time. The man begged the man to band and join the band. Again, I, I like the stresses here. And again, I'm kind of hearing two major thought groups, which I again think help is helping the rhythm. Okay, so I think I think that's sounding pretty good. The man begged the man to band and join the band. I think the biggest suggestion again, like we've seen all day, is like the S sound versus A sounds, so like men versus man or Ben versus band. The differences between those. Hello, Gardun. Thanks for joining us on the Lang Aid stream. Um, let's just analyze that a little bit more. The man begged the man. I'm hearing the men beg the man. Versus, versus the men beg the man, man, again, and combinations, which we've talked about so much. To band and join the band. I hear band and join the band. To band and join the band. See if you can hear that. I'm hearing to band and join the band. And to band and join the band. Okay, so what I would recommend is more to bend and join the band. Bend and join the band. Okay, so my biggest suggestion is hey, I think looking at S sounds and A sounds would be really helpful for you because um, right now those sounds seem to be getting a little bit confused. Again, for the S sound, raise the back of your tongue, the middle of your tongue, the front of your tongue, everything up, close your mouth a little bit more, relax your lips. Uh, uh. For the A sound, when it's linking with N, it's more AN, AN. Notice how much wider my mouth is. Uh, middle of your tongue high, uh, front of your tongue down, back of your tongue. Tongue's going to slide back a little bit when you get this and sound. And again, you want to do a heavy breath out of your nose before the end. It's like an, an, band, man. So just some notes on that because those are the big things I'm hearing there. Um, I like your stresses. I like your rhythm. Um, I'll just continue studying some foul sounds. Um, thank you, Gardun, for the follow. I really appreciate that. Um, let's listen to that one more time. The men begged the man to bend and join the band. Thank you as well for Safa for the follow as well. The man begged the man to band and join the band. Yeah, I think the, the big thing there is the, the, the vowel sounds. Also, the, another thing on placement too, it sounds very tense and close to me. The man begged the man. The men begged the, the men begged the, versus the men begged the, the men begged the. So try and get a little bit more air through your throat and lowering the placement too a little bit, I think can help get that to sound even more natural too. Ooh, streaming, man. Make sure you always have water by you. I have learned this lesson the hard way. All right. Thank you so much, as always, for sending that audio file. Let's take a listen to, I see, two more that we're going to be taking a look at. One of them is a um, a story <laughs> that we will take a look at for Bob. Um, but let's listen to this one. I think this is the same person from last time, so... If you watched our stream last time, you know who we finished with. I think you'll, or if you don't remember, I think you'll recognize. The man begged the man to bend and join the band. <laughs> that, that, that end, <laughs> it gets me every time. It's like, bang. It's like, it's like a bobblehead that's like bobbling everywhere. Uh, listen to that one more time. The man begged the man to bend and join the band. <laughs> on um on a vowel note, I feel like I'm hearing the men beg the men to 
bend and join the band. I'm hearing like, eh, 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 eh. Uh, so again, kind of similar things to what we just saw in the previous recording. And kind of all day, right? The the S sound and the A sound is um, tripping a lot of people up. Um, so continuing to review that, the, all the notes we said before, I think are valid. So again, S sound, A sound. Um, if you just stopped in, you can just go back a little earlier in the stream. I talk about how to do those things many times. Um, the men beg the men. I'm going to go back to men really quick. The men beg. The men, men, again, placement. The placement's really high, even on that end sound. Mm, mm, versus mm, mm. So again, trying to get that placement a little bit lower, not just for vowels, but also for consonants, just like we said. Beg the man to bend and join the band. Yeah, and <laughs> as it's somewhat being sung, there's, <laughs> I think, a few extra stresses. So again, another thing I would say is, um, cut down on the number of thought groups, cut down on the number of stresses. I think that would be um, helpful there as well. Okay. All right. That is all the files that I see. I believe if I have missed you, this is your chance to let me know that I have not done your file. Okay. Um, I think I've looked at all of our questions as well. Um, to all my people who have sent me files and things, thank you so much. Um, Let's look at our last one. So again, our last one is going to be um, different than the other ones. So again, you had two options today. The first option was to do a sentence, and then the second one was to just give a real quick description of your of your job and and things like that. Um, so let's take a listen to this. You're going to actually see me. I'm going to open up a document for us. So I'm going to keep track of some grammar things that I hear, um, and we can. Um, Keep, keep tabs on that as well. Just let me space everything out a little bit. Okay, and we're also taking note on some pronunciation things as well. Okay, and again, if you're following on the Lang 8 stream, which is cool, uh, this is a slightly longer listening. So I'm going to not say anything basically for like 10 to 15 seconds as I listen to this audio. But you can hear the audio if you go to youtube.com slash fluent Americans. You can kind of hear what, what I am hearing. So let's take a look. Um, so Beta asked, do I know the person? Maybe their language is musical. That Maybe I'm completely wrong about this. You know, that's a great question, Z. Um, if I have offended you by saying that you almost sounds like singing, um, my apologies. Um, it sounds to me like some of the sounds are dragged out. So if this is something that I, um, you know, you don't have to necessarily drag out your vowels for, for such long periods of time. You know, you, you don't need to be like, man, you could just do man and things like that. Um, Denny is in the house. How's it going, man? Everything good? Tutto a posto. Raccontami qualcosa di bello, huh? All right, let's take a listen to our friend here. I recently just quit it from my last job in the center of disease control of Taiwan due to how exhausted it is. Okay, good stuff here. It's just some real quick grammar things. Um, instead of quit, it's just going to be quit. And it's just quit, 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 quit. It stays the same. Okay, so there's not going to be any, um, it's an irregular verb, just stays the same. Um, and watch out for, this is a super common thing we see. Um, with uh, participles, You're watching out for like ed versus ing. Remember that ing is describing um, something that's like you can't. The work isn't exhausted. The work makes you exhausted. You could say like how exhausted it makes me, or you could say how exhausting it is. Okay, so this again would be your options. How exhausted it makes me or how exhausting it is. You can't really say, though, um, how, how exhausted um, it is. Okay, so just, just knowing those, those little quick grammar things. So let me see if there's any other grammar things that stand out. I recently just quit it from my last job. You don't need to say quit it from my job. You can just say I just quit my job. Just quit my job. You don't need to say I just quit from my job. You just say I just quit my job in the center of disease control of Taiwan. Disease control, disease control. So let's let's talk about some pronunciation things now. Okay, so there's some grammar things. So I'm hearing like disease control. We'll take a look at that. The center for disease control. Um, 
I recently just quit it from my last job in the center of disease control of Taiwan due to how exhausted it is. Okay, cool. So just some quick uh, pronunciation things that we want to go over here. Um, disease control, disease control. This is a compound noun. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Compound nouns, two words joined together to make one thing. When this happens in English, um, if you're from Taiwan, you know, this is actually kind of similar to, to Mandarin. Um, two words, but it's one thing. And when this happens in English, you stress the first word. So it's not disease control. It's disease control. So for disease control. Okay, so just a note on that. Um, next one, instead of recently, you know, nothing wrong with that if you pronounce the T. But what you're commonly going to see if that if a T comes after the letter N, you're actually more likely to remove the T. So instead of saying recently, you're more likely to hear recently, recently. Um, watch out for the word quit. So it's not quit. It's more quit. Quit, short I sound. So it's not I quit, but it should be more I quit, with a short I sound. Okay. Job, a little bit wider, a little more ah, job, job. If you do more job, it's going to be a little bit more British based. Okay, so it's not job, it's more job, really relaxed and open job. Center, we saw this again with recently. Center, again, T after the N, take that off, it's just center. And then lastly, it is, it is, because this T is linking that, excuse me, the T is surrounded by vowels. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that into like a fast D type sound. So like it is. And notice the linking too. It's going to be like it, eh, and it's going to be like this, it, this, it is, things like that. Okay. Um, so just some quick um, pronunciation things there. I'll play that for you guys again so you can hear all those things I just mentioned. I recently just quit it from my last job in the center of disease control of Taiwan due to how exhausted it is. Yeah. I don't say, you know, continue to study things like listening. I mean, <laughs> study listening, right? No, study uh, linking. Study study more linking. Um, to listen to this part here. It, it is. Uh, not that part. Disease control of Taiwan due to how exhausted it is. Due to how exhausted it is. All of your words are kind of coming in very, I don't want to say like disjointed, but they're very individual. Nothing's kind of leading into the next part. And so that's making... It's kind of disrupting the rhythm of it. It's never giving you a chance to flow. Of disease control of Taiwan due to how disease control of Taiwan, like it's a very separated. How exhausted it is. Of how exhausted it is. So again, more linking. Instead of how exhausted it is, it's more how exhausted it is. How exhaust or like I said, exhausting. How exhausting it is. How exhausting it is. So I, I would really recommend studying some rules of linking to help join words together. Um, in a way that sounds a little bit more natural and less detached. All right, I'm going to give you guys back your screen. So you have a right to see your things. Okay. All right, let's see what we got going on. Hey, that's great. Getting some new ink. Okay. How long was your tattoo session? It was like a marathon, eight-hour tattoo, or was it a little shorter? Um, I'll be honest, I'm going to be heading out very, very, very momentarily, but I'm here to take on a couple of last quick questions that people have. If you wanted to send me a quick pronunciation file, now is the time to do it if you wanted to. Um, and again, let me, I'll have to reopen the document, things like that. So I'm going to check the drive just to see if anyone has any last questions for me that I have missed and things like that. Um, and just some notes, you know, if you liked what we did today, you want to get feedback for your pronunciation every single day of the week. Again, that's what our Telegram group is for. So again, if you go to patreon.com slash fluent American, you can see um, what we're doing um, every day of the week. Get some feedback for yourself. Hello to XR wall. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, so again, YouTube. I mean, patreon.com. I always want to mix it up. Patreon.com slash fluent American. Every day of the week in our Telegram group, we do different pronunciation things. Um, I see one more pronunciation file that came in, so we'll take a look at this one. Um, other opportunities, just to let you guys know, if you want to study native speaker, <laughs> this one's ridiculous. Um, if you want to study native speaker pronunciation, okay, um, you want to know how native speakers are using uh, intonation, uh, stress, linking, thought groups, and things like that. 
Um, just a note that again, every Monday on Mondays, we have a group called, it's called the influencers. And we basically analyze native speaker um, pronunciation. We look at what native speakers are doing. And then we basically try to apply it to our own speech. We try to copy what they're saying and things like that. So if you want to see how native speakers are using um, pronunciation and things like that, um, I definitely recommend taking a look um, at that. If you go to fluentamerican.com, it's the very first picture. Um, you can schedule, join our group. It's a group class. It's 30 minutes long. Um, it's at 1730. It's like 530 p.m. Um, New York time. Um, so if you're interested in kind of analyzing native speaker conversations and things, um, definitely take a look at that opportunity. Um, okay, I see one last file. This will be our last file for... Oh, Denny... Um, either one is fine. Every, either one of those will be fine. Um, Denny, um, you can send me the sentence or you can talk about your school, whatever you find easier. Um, Hassan asks the difference between pitch and placement. Good question. Um, it, it's, it, pitch is a really complicated topic either. Cause like, it's actually depending on who you talk to, it takes on different definitions. Um, I, I would say in general, what you see with pitch is like, eh, eh, eh. Eh, like um, you know, just high pitch, low pitch. Um, think of like a piano. Like uh, you know, on the right hand side you have higher pitch notes. On the left hand side you have lower pitch notes. Um, placement is more about where you're projecting from. Like, are you projecting from like up here? Or are you projecting from like down here? Okay, so just just a note. Um, that that's really key about placement. Placement is about you know you want to be really projecting low. They are related. You know, so what a lot of people find is it's easier for them to do a uh, lower placement if they speak in a slightly lower pitch. Um, I actually have a video on that as well. I mean, if you tell you, if you search my channel for this pitch, it should come up. It's just talk about lowering your pitch. Um, so they certainly can be connected, but they don't necessarily have to be connected. Um, so just, just a note about that. Um, and again, then you can either talk about his score or the sentence. Either one of those is fine. As I'm waiting for that, we can listen to this file. Oh, this is a long one. Hang on. Let me, I want to check this file, see what's going on here. <laughs> oh, this is from Dave. <laughs> Denny, if this is you, I think this is your file. <laughs> If this is you, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you much feedback <laughs> on this because <laughs> I think it, it's 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 a work of art. So I don't know if I could if I would be justified in analyzing it. But to make sure that you all can enjoy this this marvelous piece of work, um, one moment. All right. Oh, this is not Denny. Okay, this is another person in school. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's let's listen to this. Um, Let's take a listen My to this. My name is Bamboo. I just graduated high school. Now I'm trapped here all day long in my mom's basement. I've been looking for a job. However, my doctor told me that I'm way too dumb to be employed. Okay, I'm going to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for that audio file. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> for the moment, I don't have much to say. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys back your, your audio. I just want to listen to um, to this one, see what Denny has given us. Just taking a quick listen to this. This is from Denny. You're talking about the tattoo. Okay. Yes. T talking about some tattoo care. For all my friends out there interested in getting some ink on your skin, we've got some care tips for tattoos in this. Um, Hassan, thank you so much for the kind words um, about the videos. I appreciate that. All right. So let me share this. All right. For, this, for the interest of time, I'm going to just like, we'll just kind of listen to this and. Um, We'll just do kind of like a quick reaction to things as I hear them. Um, how about that first part? So my school, 
again, I think the placement could be a little lower. It's like, so my school versus so my school, school. Notice again that ooh sound, right? With the ooh sound plus the L breaks into two parts. School, school. Eight in the morning versus morning, morning. Um, I would say on morning, try to get the first syllable to be a little stronger than your second syllable. I said morning, more morning, eight in the morning. If you want to re reduce that NG sound and do morning, fine. I won't, I won't argue with that. The more traditional way would be morning, but you could say morning. Um, I usually, you probably want to get that J sound just a little stronger. Um, just a little stronger. Um, like use, use, use. 6.30, since I third it, more 30. This is this is like to everyone here, if you're watching this stream, this is something you you I would also encourage to, to look out for. If you have a word ending on an E sound, make sure it stays strong. It's not eh, it's more E, 30, 30. Okay. Um, quick note, Hassan asks, do I live stream every Saturday? Yes, every Saturday. Um, actually, the next two Saturdays might be a little bit weird, but pay attention to my community posts. I'll be letting you guys know about the schedule. Um, I do still plan on streaming on Saturdays. So it might just be at a different time um, just for the next two Saturdays because I have some interesting events coming up. I got to take the bus. Um, I got to take the bus. I got to take the bus versus. Take off the stress on I. Um, for my romance language speakers, um, watch out for pronouns. There's a tendency for a lot of people who speak like Italian or Spanish or Portuguese to um, to overstress pronouns because your language is blessed with being able to remove pronouns, right? You, you don't usually need to say pronouns, but in English you do. Um, so what tends to happen a lot is um, I see a lot of speakers of romance languages um, overemphasizing pronouns. It's like, I got to take the bus versus I got to take the bus. I got to take the bus. So I, I wouldn't even stress I. I wouldn't stress anything there until bus. I got to take the bus. I got to take the bus. It's like, I got to take the bus versus I got to take the bus. Watch out for no. Uh, British English versus American English. Uh, British English using things like new versus American English, which just uses things like no. It goes right from the N sound to the O sound. So you don't need that U. It's just O, no. I got to take care of it. Um, the R sound could be a little stronger. Care of it, more care of it. Um, I would say the linking there. Yeah, care. But maybe a little stronger on the A sound. Care, air, care, care of it. And I got to wash 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 it. I would maybe even have raised the pitch a little bit more because... Um, I don't know that we're at the end of the sentence just yet. So if you had a stronger falling intonation on wash, I would have known that, oh, he's, he's done talking and I've got to wash it. Um, it's like, like compare like, um, and I've got to, and I've got to wash it versus, and I've got to wash it. You know, if, if you have a sharper fall, that kind of indicates to your listener that you're, you're, you're done. I got to wash it versus, and I got to wash it. Okay. So I just think that would have helped indicate more that you're finishing. Okay. But those are just some quick thoughts for you, Denny. I hope that is helpful. All right. Give you guys back your screens one last time. So, again, my name is Jeff. I am with Fluent American, uh, my channel and website and things like that. If you're interested in pronunciation practice, please check out our resources. You know, we have videos. Uh, we have a, a channel on Telegram, which, again, you can find at patreon.com slash American. We have courses. We have group classes, which analyze pronunciation on Monday evenings. Um, you can see that at fluentamerican.com. Um, what else do you want? <laughs> How else can I help you with your pronunciation? If you have some ideas for me, let me know. Um, if you want to support the channel, but you don't want to take a class, classes cost money and things like that, and they also take time totally understand if you want to support the channel easy ways that you can do that um check out the videos that we post um when you're checking them out watch as much of them as you can you know if it's a horrible video i'm sorry <laughs> but if it's <laughs> an okay video what you can do you know clicking a video watching the whole thing 
you know, that supports the video on the algorithm and things like that. If people click often, that makes the video appear less. Um, so those are just little things that you can do um, to support the channel. Also doing things like posting comments, liking videos, um, sharing the content, you know, little things like that really do help um, not just this channel, but any channel that you're interested in supporting. Um, as always, I'll have another video for you guys coming out tomorrow. Our live streams are on Saturdays. Again, our live stream for the next two weeks, maybe at slightly different times on Saturdays, just because we have some things coming up. I have to watch my son because my wife has to take some trips. Um, but I, as always, appreciate getting your feedback. If you, you send us some audio files, keep that Google Doc link because that is the same link that we use every time. Okay, so just refresh it later today or um, sometime this week, and you'll see a new set of challenges, um, new sentence to read, and things like that um, for our next live stream and things. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you to Sita. Thank you to Denny for your audio. No British English. <laughs> Is that our motto now? <laughs> Fluent American. <laughs> no British English. Is that, <laughs> Is that what we're doing? It's eliminated. Oh, yes. Yeah, so if you're watching Squid Game... This is definitely for you. I can see the influence is coming out. Um, thank you, Hassan. Thank you to everyone who checked us out. I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. We will target your pronunciation more next time. You guys take care.